Welcome to March. This is my reptile room. Not only is it the 1st of March, not only are we doing March Madness where we're going to be uploading a video every single day through March 2019, 8 p.m. every day. Tune in to see what those videos are. Let's go to the room tour. So let's start off with the Bosque Monitor. His name is Hugo. He's a two year old Bosque Monitor. Now anyone from America or anywhere like that, you'd probably call these Savannah Monitors. In the UK, they're called a Bosque Monitor. That's because they were first introduced um, into Europe by a bloke called Lewis Bosque. So they've named it after him in the UK. Now these originate from Western Africa, those sorts of uh, foresty landy areas. And although these are quite widely available in the pet trade lately, um, they are actually becoming under threat in the wild. Now that under threat is due to people hunting them for their leather and their meat and for the wild caught pet trade. The stats for these are quite shocking to be honest. Between 2010 and 2018, 178,000 Bosque monitors were seized as illegal importers from the USA. So this guy's called Hugo. He's um, in a bioactive enclosure. It's a six foot enclosure, so it's not his forever home. Um, but it's fully bioactive. He's got a clean up crew of Morio worm beetles, tropical grey wood lice, tropical orange wood lice, and a few other various bits and bobs. He's got quite a few springtails in there with him as well. His enclosure does need a bit of tarting up and a bit more substrate added into it. It's all just compacted down over time. Now these are a burrowing species, you can see the start of his burrow underneath the rocks there. He's not camera shy at all as you can tell there, he's always dead keen. He loves a massively humid enclosure so we spray it down a couple of times a week. He loves getting in the spray just like you can see here. He lives off mainly an insectivore diet, crickets, locusts, morio worms, anything along those lines he absolutely loves. But that's his enclosure there. We've put that big support beam in the middle there to acquire the weight above it. So watch every single video through March Madness right the way to the end. Comment below, hashtag Northern Exotics UK, and you'll be entered into a competition. So that was Hugo, the Bosque Monitor. Now we're going to go further up to Popcorn, the Carl Sunglow Boa. His enclosure is exactly the same length and width and everything because it is directly above the Bosque Monitor's enclosure. We are recently starting to make it a little bit more arboreal for him because he does love a bit of a good climb when he's in here. It, he always loves to hide behind that budder in the corner. He curls up really tight in that little area there. Now boa constrictors, they come from the Central and South American sort of regions. Now this is a Carl Sunglow boa. It's a fancy morph of just a normal boa constrictor. It was produced by Peter Carl in 1996. That's when he first produced the first ever Carl Sunglow Boa. There's two different strains of Sunglow Boa, the Carl and the um, Sharp Sunglow Boa. And the difference between them is a little bit of coloration difference, but they're both virtually similar. Just two different bloodlines between them. Now Peter Carl, he is quite an ingenious man. He also produced the first ever Snow Boa Constrictor back in 1992. Here's our main man anyway, uh, Popcorn has Carl Sunglow Boa. As I said, he does love his arboreal setup. There's his lovely colorations on a close-up. What an absolutely stunning creature. He was always bred up to be a male breeder, uh, but since we've acquired him, he's just been a pet. So we get him out, we handle a lot more. He wasn't very handleable to start with. We've just worked on him every single day, and there he is in all of his glory. I still can't get over those colors on the tail pattern. They are absolutely stunning. Popcorn's only around about three years old. He's only ever going to grow to about 8 to 10 foot long. Um, if he was a female, uh, obviously it would grow a little bit bigger, up to around about 13 foot in length. But that's popcorn, let's move on. To Rosie. Rosie's next, here she is. This is our Guyana and Redtail Boa. She's just over 2 years old, she's sat there up in the top corner all coiled up. Now we did have a hide in here, uh, but we couldn't fit it on any of the shelves, so it went underneath the shelves. And um she was just always in it. It wasn't up to the correct temperature underneath those hides. Save getting a bigger bulb. Um, we took the hide out and she's exploring a hell of a lot better now. She sheds better and everything like that. So it was definitely a good call. There she is in all of her glory. I love that reduced pattern on her. Now the Guyana and Redtail, not like the normal common boas where they come from Central America. These actually come from Guyana. It's just a different locality. There are other species that come from uh, local Amazon basin sort of countries like Peru and Brazil and um, Suriname and stuff like that. 
But this girl's nowhere near fully grown. When she is fully grown, she's going to be around about 13 foot long. The males will get a couple of feet shorter than that, but she's going to put some girth on soon. But that's her enclosure anyway. She's not at a decent size yet, so she is still in a four foot enclosure. We've made it semi arboreal because she does like to climb. She loves her tight little areas. On top of Popcorns Viv, there's all of our isopods and our Morio worm beetles. And now we move on to Xena. She's a female common boa constrictor. She was a rescue. Um, she's still in quarantine, that's why she's in this Viv. It's not her actual home, it's just in there for a quarantine Viv. That's why she's on newspaper substrate. It's a six foot enclosure. Um, newspaper substrate, a few bits to climb around on and a big water dish. That's all she really needs for the quarantine enclosure. Hopefully within the coming months she'll come out of that enclosure when she does pass through quarantine safely. She really was a handful when we first got her. If you want to see a close-up video of her being quite angry, I'll stick a link in the card section above. If you want to see that, just click on that and it'll take you straight through to the video. But now we're going to move on into the reptile room. We're going to start off with the Scolopendra Black Flame first. There it is, our giant Vietnamese centipede. Scolopendra Black Flame, venomous, horrible, spiny, scary, you name it, that's what she is. Absolutely scary. She's in a little 12 by 12 Exoterra. I wish I could get in there to turn the glass, but she scares the absolute crap out of me. As you can tell, she's just come running at the glass as soon as I try to open it. So I'm just going to leave her in there for a bit. Occasionally, she'll let me open the door up and throw some food in for her. But that is the Scolopendra Black Flame. Let's move on to the enclosure that's right next door to hers, which is the Pac-Man Frog. Ben, the Pac-Man Frog. Now, I really, really need to get his enclosure upgraded. He's in a 12 by 12 Exoterra as well, and it suits him perfectly fine. But God, it's an eyesore right now. It was a lovely bioactive enclosure. Tropical grey wood lice, dwarf white wood lice as cleanup crew. Had a couple of pothos plants, a bromeliad. It looks stunning in there. But now look at it. He is like a bulldozer. He went through that viv. He really needs an upgrade. He's the next one to get an upgrade. But then again, I've been saying that for a month or so now. He needs an upgrade. He's the next one to get an upgrade. Fully bioactive setup still. Still got the cleanup crew, the hydro balls, the water layer, everything like that. But he's a, he's, he needs an upgrade. Let's just say that. But directly below that, that's our Locust Breeding Facility, and then down to Diego the King. So in the comment section below, let me know what your favourite animal is. What do you own that you think is the pride of your collection? Stick it in the comment section below. So this is Diego's enclosure. We all know Diego's enclosure, nothing's really changed down here. Although I will be, well I am planning on doing a substrate change to fully bioactive. Because he's not bioactive yet, and most of my setups are bioactive. It would be nice to have him on a similar sort of setup, give him the enrichment that he deserves. Now these guys, the bearded dragon, they are quite fascinating. They originate from Central Australia. Now when people hear of that, they automatically think of the sunny beaches and stuff like that. But these guys do not go on sand. They're not a sand-loving animal. They prefer up in the Rocky Mountains, up in the shrublands, all that sort of area of Australia. He's in a he's in a four-foot enclosure, fully customised. Um, I built it myself, full custom background, which again I built myself. That took about three or four weeks to do that. Layers and layers and layers on, of grout on top of the polystyrene background, just to accommodate the extra heat. We didn't want the um, polystyrene to melt because of the heat. But he loves it, it's just perched up there all the time. He's always up on that. He's on the cold side, which is still a decent temperature. Occasionally, when he gets a bit cool, he'll come over this side and bask in the basking spot. And it, yeah, that's it. That is Diego, the bearded dragon. Let's move on now. And we're moving on to the junky part. This part's the um, Moria Worm breeding facility. Onto all of our leaf litter for our bioactive enclosures. We also sell that on the northern exotic line. A few plants and some moss that's growing up there. There's a closer look at the moss. We've been growing that for quite a while now. And as you can see, it is thriving quite nicely. That's a bit of an invertebrate rack, or more a grub rack. We've got all of our big grubs on there, all um, growing nicely, weighing perfectly, and uh, getting ready to pupate. Inside those two, we've got our flower beetle L3 grubs. Now, we're going over to the other corner. This is our super pastel yellow belly raw python. Uh, we don't really feature him too much, basically because he's a bit of a dick. He's like any real normal raw python, they go a bit fussy on food, they're just a pet rock and they just ball up. There he is again, in all of his glory, all of his colours. It's just on a newspaper substrate because he didn't really feed whenever he's on aspen bedding, So, he, but he does when he's on newspaper. But just below that, Viv, is the leopard geckos. Now there is a change here, we've taken 
all the substrate out the plants out this was fully bioactive and we've moved it back down to newspaper bedding simply because it's the breeding season for them we've got the male in there with them and uh, we don't want no substrate getting caught up in the hemipenes of the male so we take the substrate out give them a nice clean area there's the lay box in the corner and uh, that is the breeding vivarium now it's got the two females in it and the male the male will be coming out shortly to give the girls a bit of a rest we have all the extra hides in there loads of extra hiding places just if they do want to get away they can there's uh, Don and the blazing blizzard leopard gecko sticking her head out just there let's see if we can find the rest there's Millie the normal leopard gecko and the male was hiding in the lay box so we can't see him at the minute but back to that big stack of vivs you've got the super pastel yellow belly the leopard gecko breeding area and the lesser raw python down the bottom just there but now over to the invert wall this is where we keep all of our invertebrates and the various bits and bobs that are just lying around to be honest but that's got all the inverts on let's go through one or two of them right now this one is our vietnamese forest scorpion this is one of our latest new additions we got this from a mystery box from mas exotics uh, go and check their websites out they're pretty decent he's just currently in a nine litre rub at the minute we need to tart it up give him a few extra hides and all that sort of stuff but he is very hungry and he does love his food all the time and um, so i'm gonna have to keep an eye on what we actually give him as you can tell he is quite an aggressive feeder as soon as the food goes in he grabs it every time no matter what you're feeding we've tried him on dubia roaches we've tried him on locusts and as you can tell right now we've just tried him on a morio worm but this next guy is our ghost mantis i absolutely love this guy i've absolutely fallen in love with him we're just currently feeding him a few flute flies now as you can tell oh, there we go he's grabbed it straight away it's feeding aggressively again this one come from max exotics it's a new um a new inhabitant in our collection check out that close-up footage of him what an amazing species these are but let's move on so these guys are our two curly haired tarantulas brachy palmer albert something or other, whatever they're called male and a female here both from the same clutch so that they'll never get bred but for those who know me uh, no i'm not really that massively into me um arachnids i'm only just getting into them so these are two new starters for me great little starter species uh, they're both extremely hungry all the time they're feeding on um owl one locusts at the minute they absolutely thrive off them one thing i find strange is one of these burrows a lot and the other one just runs around like a lunatic here we are onto the asian forest scorpions they're only the little babies now these guys i've never actually seen them feed i've got two of these i've put both of them in separate enclosures so they are separated and i just leave a, a few baby crickets in there overnight come back the next morning every baby cricket's gone and uh, these guys are still running around happy as larry they're in two little one litre tubs anyway but onto the chocolate millipedes these are in three litre enclosure a little blast plus tub there they are i got these from uh, mas exotics again these are two new uh, inhabitants into our collection absolutely stunning dead placid they come out all the time they love to crawl all over you so we do get them out quite a bit they are quite fascinating to just sit there watching telly while they're crawling all over you there's their enclosure but let's move on to the a gig the gig well, it's a giant african millipede slightly bigger than the chocolate ones but there he is we did have two of these we got them from seas however one did pass away uh, so we do only have the one now there he is in all of his glory it's absolutely fascinating to watch them burrow just like that and then we move on to the uh, black beauty stick insects these are in a little exotero nano setup uh, they do need some more privet in there which i'll be going out later to get they're stunning i love watching them i find them fascinating especially their story of in the wild i think they're only ever found in the wild in 10 acres of land that's the only place in the world you can find them in the wild how fascinating is that remember guys 8 p.m every single day march madness i hope you've enjoyed the video if you have hit the thumbs up button like subscribe and if you're new around here hit that notification bell peace out